Welcome back. 649 right now as you put together your plan to prepare your home for what might come our way this hurricane season. There are lessons to be taken from last season and we asked a team of hurricane damage inspectors to share with us which preparations worked and which didn't. And we found out surprisingly, especially when it comes to hurricane impact resistance windows. CBS 4's David Sada reports. John McCallie has been inspecting hurricane damaged homes and repairs since Hurricane Andrew. And this past year, his team was quite busy. You guys have done a few inspections since Irma? Uh, about 400, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a couple. What have you seen coming out of those reports? Wow, it's been over 10 years since we've had really a major, major storm hit us here. And, and what we found is that the, you know, the upgrades to the building code and the, and, and the changes we've made to the way we build actually have really, really helped. That is the good news. For those who did have damage, McCauley says much of it was preventable. We asked him to show us what he meant by that. A tree will, will do a lot of damage. If a tree could touch a roof, I've literally seen where a tree will rub through a shingle roof over a period of hours, just constantly rubbing. McCauley recommends you trim the trees now. It'll not only keep the limbs off your roof, the tree may be able to withstand the storm. This particular home suffered over 200 damaged tiles. The fix for this? Get your roof inspected. Most roofers will do this for free in hopes if you do need a repair, you'll hire them. What's happened is the mortar dries out over time, over you know heating and cooling every day, and it loses its adhesiveness and its ability to withstand. So normally a roof that could withstand 100 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour may fail at 60. Another item he saw post Irma was water. 100 mile an hour wind driven horizontally for hours on end came through this garage flooded this garage, damaged stuff. You know, people put stuff in the garage thinking, well, put it in the garage, it's all safe, it's fine. Well, to best we could tell, it was about an inch and a half of water in this garage for, you know, hours. John recommends stuffing towels into vents. Even if they are soaked, it will keep water from flowing in. He recommends doing the same for your windows. What would happen is the water would enter the track driven by 100 mile an hour wind. It has a drain, but it can only drain out so fast, or maybe there's debris in there, and then water will inundate the track and pour into the home. And about those impact windows with high price tags, Irma showed us they may not be worth it. They found that the windows had actually been sandblasted by the debris and thousands of, of little scratches and nicks. There's no way to salvage that kind of window. Uh, not that we know of at this point. You really can't polish the glass. Lastly, John recommends checking the seals on all your doors, windows, and sliding door tracks. A majority of their post Irma inspections dealt with situations where water got into homes and created chaos. Uh, mold needs two things. It needs moisture and food. The food is always here. You probably couldn't make a better food than drywall for mold. It's hard to imagine putting storm shutters up over hurricane impact glass. It just seems kind of crazy. One final note from personal experience. If you have storm shutters, you want to make sure that you have all the hardware, the screws and the bolts and the nuts to make sure you have that already. You don't want to be the person at the hardware store trying to find that last box when a storm is approaching. From the Florida Keys, David Sutter, CBS 4 News.